experience the grandeur of the wilderness, the magnificence of North American nature, stunning images of wildlife, next on Profiles of Nature. I've had my share of adventures over the years, hunting wildlife with a camera. The memories and images of wildlife cinematographer Norman Lightfoot. I filmed seals off Canada's east coast, lions and elephants in East Africa, walrus and polar bears in the Arctic, and recently monkeys, snakes and crocodiles in Central America. But I've always wanted to go to Alaska and the Yellowstone region of Montana and Wyoming where I could hunt, in my own way, the big game mammals of the mountains. And this then would be my mountain safari. Springtime in Alaska's spectacular Denali National Park, one of the world's great wildlife sanctuaries, home of the awesome unpredictable grizzly bear. A new adventure begins for Canadian Norman Lightfoot as he grabs this rare opportunity to film a fascinating encounter between a grizzly and a wolf. The wolf has wandered into the bear's feeding territory. And the bear reacts. That winter, a moose fell through the ice, was trapped, and drowned. The carcass has been discovered only recently, when the ice went out. First by the bear, and now by the wolf. The bear had been feeding on that carcass for something like two to three days, and the wolf was coming in and out and waiting its turn to, to get a little piece of the meat. But the bear, even though full, decided it was going to stay there and watch over this great source of food. A bold, alert, hungry wolf. A lumbering, overstuffed grizzly. Despite the bear's almost comical behavior, the danger, the threat is always present. Eventually, the wolf wanders off in search of a more easily obtainable meal. The hunt continues, sometimes with a stills camera, as Norman stalks his prey to get exactly the shot he wants. Here, he captures stunning images of a handsome cow moose and her yearling calves, browsing in an alpine meadow. He may decide to follow their movements and behavior through a discreet telephoto lens, or approach them in a more direct fashion, letting them see him, letting them decide how close they will allow him to come. Generally, he says, he plays by their rules. To be in the right place at the right time, Norman needs all the skills of a big game hunter. But he brings something more, respect and concern for all the animals he hunts. We will return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. Coming up next, a bomb that can kill us all on secret weapons. A few years ago in towns like this, there were no recycling programs. But now more and more communities are welcoming new partners in recycling. Partners like the Cracker Barrel Old Country Store. And we'd like to ask people across the country to join in developing more recycling programs because we've all learned that recycling is one way to preserve what can never be replaced. Please join us in recycling. And as you travel across this great land, pay us a visit at the Cracker Barrel. Do you want to fly where there are no runways? Do you 
want to swing when no one has swung before? Or do you want to surf where there is no ocean and get yourself a Toyota 4Runner? Because where you're headed, you don't want to be driving anything less. Mothers have learned from countless doctors and pharmacists nah. to take care of coughs with Robitussin. And they've taken this advice home. Nah. Robitussin recommended by Dr. Mom. Ask your doctor or pharmacist. You may leave North Carolina's heartland once you've finished vacationing here. But one thing's for sure. North Carolina's heartland will never leave you. Buy it. Buy it. Hey, cut it out. Excellent. Look, I know you're watching the Discovery Channel right now, but you don't know what's coming on next. So you're flipping channels. You're looking through the paper. You're trying to find out what's on the Discovery Channel. I know this because I used to do it, too. Then I found out about this. This is the Discovery Channel's magazine. It's a program guide, plus great articles on adventure, science, history, nature, people. Great photography, award-winning writers. Complete hour-by-hour -hour program listings and descriptions of all my favorite Discovery Channel shows. So now I finally have a way to plan what I'm gonna watch. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna sit there just flipping around, missing out? Or maybe subscribe to the only magazine that tells you what's on the Discovery Channel right now. Call 1-800-832-8343 to order Destination Discovery, and you'll receive 12 monthly issues for only $14.95. That's more than 50% off the cover price. Hey, what are you waiting for? We now return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. This superb national park is named after the jewel of the rugged Alaskan range, the highest mountain in North America, known to many as Mount McKinley. But to native Alaskans, it will always be Denali, the high one, the great one. Snow-white doll sheep roam the upper reaches of the mountain slopes, crags and ridges, safe from almost any predator. Here in May, ewes give birth to their young, hovering over them, shielding them from the wind and the cold. Within hours, a lamb will try to struggle to its feet, if at first only for a short time. Soon after, following in mother's footsteps, the lamb begins to explore its mountain domain. In the shadow of snow-capped mountains are alpine slopes and lowland valleys, and an amazing range of natural habitats, some with little or no snow, a taiga zone and open tundra, where Norman Lightfoot encounters a male willow ptarmigan in dark spring plumage, munching on tender willow buds. Named officially by the school children as Alaska's state bird, willow ptarmigan in winter are pure white, like doll sheep, well camouflaged to blend in with the landscape. This local inhabitant is the legendary whiskey jack, camp robber, or Canada jay, now known as the gray jay. Not an uncommon bird in any sense of the word, but for Norman, as fascinating as one of the more colorful members of the jay family. Sporting a brownish spring coat, an observant snowshoe hare appears to be watching the strange behavioral patterns of our approaching photographer. If it was a fox or a wolf, the hare might show a little more caution, a little less curiosity. The snowshoe hare is another year-round resident. It too has an all-white winter coat. With an insect in its beak, a black-billed magpie struts briskly through the grass, while nearby, a curious little ground squirrel allows Norman to gently invade its territory. The ground squirrel turns out to be anything but camera shy.
Sometimes, hunting with a camera, you just get lucky, Norman says. Like spotting this beautiful red fox in the early hours of a chilly morning, on her way to do a little hunting herself. Later, the same fox was observed over several days, making her way from her den to a forest hunting site and back, 10 miles round trip. My journey to Alaska was just a, a fantastic trip. Denali National Park is a huge park, and to see huge game animals out in this, this vast, vast landscape was just tremendous. Something huge and wild. A small herd of caribou moving through an alpine valley without this year's full set of new antlers, but still impressive. At home in this vast northern landscape, The other thing that I found interesting in Alaska was the changeability of the weather. One minute it would be sunshine and bright, and the next a snowstorm would come in. And with the snow, another chance for a different shot of the same little red fox bringing food back to the den. The fox pauses briefly possibly uneasy about the presence of the camera and the photographer. Then decides to carry on with business as usual. A willow ptarmigan cocks a reddish eyebrow and stares directly into the lens from several different angles. While large snowflakes blanket a wooded thicket in spring, the moose continue to graze, possibly the same cow moose and her yearling calves we saw earlier. Moose feed on leaves, twigs, and grasses, having teeth only in the front of their lower jaw. When they appear to bite off something, they're actually tearing it off. Norman recalls the scene. One of the highlights of my trip to Alaska was the moose in the snowfall. This was a real heavy, wet fall of snow, wetting myself and the camera, and the moose were just calmly grazing on, in the underbrush. A cinematographer's memories of Denali. We will return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. You may leave North Carolina once you've finished vacationing here. But one thing's for sure, North Carolina will never leave you. All pain relievers are not the same. Introducing aspirin-free Anison Maximum Strength Gel Caplets. Strong against stubborn headaches, easy to swallow, gentle on your stomach. New Gel Caplets, the newest form in pain relief of aspirin-free Anison. It's Sunday morning. You have it filled very cinnamon rolls. When in walks this guy, Cinnamon rolls. Sweet, good Lord. So much gooier. Sticky fingers, yeah. So much bigger. Mercy. So much more of everything you love. Mm, this ain't your regular roll. Bigger. Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. Wow. Dwarfed by mountainous glaciers, working in sub-zero temperatures, one family attempts to befriend the Arctic's most fearsome scavenger. Don't miss their Arctic Odyssey on Challenge, Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Where can you find the unsurpassed quality and flavor of Coleman beef, raised naturally without hormones and antibiotics? Mrs. Gooch's Naturally. What are you doing 
this weekend. Wouldn't you rather come to Six Flags Magic Mountain? It's Double Play Weekend. Saturdays, we'll be giving away two trips to Hawaii every two hours. And Sundays, you can ride our monster roller coasters twice in a row. You can also pick up a $10 discount coupon at an AM, PM mini market. <laughs> Do your laundry Monday. Double Play Weekend, October 3rd to November 1st. Now return to Profiles of Nature on the Discovery Channel. It's late September, and Norman Lightfoot continues his mountain safari in the wilds of northwest Wyoming, in Yellowstone National Park, with its magnificent scenery, canyons, waterfalls, and rivers. Here we find another whole range of habitats and one of the world's largest protected animal populations, home of the rare and beautiful trumpeter swan who breeds here, and large mammals like this female elk. Yellowstone is one of the ultimate destinations for all who hunt with a camera. Searching for wildlife by a riverbank, Norman came across this amazing scene, a herd of bison crossing the river. The lighting was spectacular, the atmosphere breathtaking. Stepping from the water, the bison are like giant prehistoric beasts in a moment out of time. four-month-old bison calf runs playfully through the grass. An adult bull and his mate take a courtship stroll beside the riverbank. On the opposite shore, a bison family makes its way to the water's edge. While nearby, a young calf has difficulty with a steep incline. Until mother leads the way. Bison crossed the river was a, a really a great experience for me also. It reminded me of the, the great herds of wildebeest in East Africa. And the other part of it was when they came out of the water and stood on the bank and just shook those great shaggy shoulders and all that spray came, came just dancing off them. It was just a beautiful sight. It was a hot, blistering day. And the water in the river was very cold. And as clouds of steam rose from the buffalo herd, it was as if they were on fire. Once again, just a beautiful sight. Affected by molten rock just below the surface, Yellowstone has more geysers, hot springs, mud pots, fumaroles, and various hydrothermal features that bubble, gurgle, hiss, and spout than anywhere else on Earth. Hot, mineral-laden water, after contact with the molten rock, pushes its way to the surface and spills over, slowly creating multicolored travertine mounds Canada geese are just one waterfowl species seen swimming in the thermal rivers, even in the coldest days of winter. Yellowstone also includes vast rolling prairie lands of incredible beauty. Here Norman discovers a harem of female pronghorns, 
and a dominant alpha buck grazing during the final days of this year's rutting season. Hunting pronghorn with a camera isn't easy. They have eyesight in most respects, as good or better than any photographer. And certainly can move faster when they want to. Native hunters say that pronghorn, despite their keen eyesight, sometimes have difficulty identifying what they see and move closer for a better look. If so, Norman may be in luck. The buck is doing something pronghorns and other game animals do, called scenting. Rubbing oils from his face and neck glands on the vegetation. Probably to establish a territory, a part of mating rituals. Suddenly, the pronghorn buck springs into action, possibly to round up his harem and move to a new location, just out of range of a telephoto lens. But Norman has journeyed to Yellowstone primarily to stalk the mighty monarch of the wilderness, the Rocky Mountain Elk. The bull's bugling call is like no other in the animal kingdom. It's the rutting season. Females often try to wander from the harem or display indifference to the bull's advances. <coughs> Dominant elk cows are first to mate, so their calves will be born in early June. Being a healthy firstborn means that a calf will be older and stronger by the time winter comes. A good hunter approaches an elk downwind. Its sense of smell is amazing. All its senses are superb. Elk cows are great protectors of their young and don't hesitate to express their emotions. Despite the responsibilities of motherhood, elk cows live up to 20 years, whereas male bucks use up a lot of energy during the rut and seldom live beyond 14 years. There is something terribly sad about observing the devastating effects of a major forest fire, a profound sense of loss as if some ugly scar has permanently injured the natural beauty of the landscape. It's like a funeral pyre. All you can see are the charred remains. Even the wildlife, it seems, has moved on to greener pastures. In 1988, a giant forest fire raced through sections of Yellowstone National Park. Here, Norman Lightfoot hunts for signs of new life, of natural decay and change of wildlife returning to a former habitat. He captured these powerful images of a bison herd in a charred forest grove grazing on new spring vegetation. If any living creature knows what it's like to come back from almost total devastation, it's the bison, the ancient buffalo. A change in the weather. Rain is on the way. Once again, like any good hunter, Norman worked through the wet weather to get these vivid images.
After the fire, new life. After the rain, a rainbow. Yellowstone is a tremendous place to be in the fall. And we hear the big bull elk bugling out in the fields. And to be able to get close enough to one of these bull elk without being chased, because they will chase people, and get the kind of close-up shots I was able to get, and just watch the behavior of the animal. I, I'm really interested in animal behavior, how they interact, and, and what the calls mean, and how the hierarchy of the herds uh, are, are worked out. Some naturalists have spent a lifetime trying to get to know the giant animal the Shawnee called the Wapiti. And Yellowstone National Park is where the Wapiti, in the 1920s under protection, began its slow return from virtual annihilation. For the elk, bison, and other animals that live here, Yellowstone Park is one of the great wildlife sanctuaries. my mountain safari, I had all the excitement of a big game hunter. Only I hunted with a camera instead of a rifle. And I left things pretty much the way I found them. Norman Lightfoot, a hunter with a vision, whose only trophies are images and memories. Coming up, sleek and compact, they are bursting with deadly hardware. Step aboard the modern destroyer on firepower. But now, retrace the evolution of the atomic bomb on secret weapons, next on the Discovery Channel. Tonight at 9.30, the Navy's ruler of the waves on firepower. This portion of Discovery is sponsored in part by Toyota, reminding you to buckle up. When you buy a 1993 Toyota 4Runner with an extra value option package, you might say you get even more than you bargained for. The power door locks and air conditioning alone make it a really cool deal. Come here, quick. Plus, you get carpeted floor mats. Let's go around. Power side mirrors. Power windows, and of course, cruise control. All this and more, and you save a thousand dollars too. So why not drop in yourself and check it out? Sunday, it's heroes and legends from American history. First, hold back time with William Wyler's classic documentary of patriotism and valor. Take off with the invincible Memphis Belle. Then, honor the man who discovered America. At 10, old world experts ask where Columbus's remains lie. And at 10.30, meet modern revelers keeping his memory alive. Sunday, beginning at 9 Eastern. Huh? I've got the worst cold a human being ever had. I've got a major presentation tomorrow. I've got a rest and I'm out of NyQuil. I could take these, but I'd still be up all night coughing, which means I'd be a wreck for the presentation, which means I could get fired. But what am I going to do? Go next door like an idiot and ask? Could I borrow a cup of NyQuil? <laughs> plains of the outback to the Great Barrier Reef. Meet the intriguing animals of Australia, nature's most unusual creatures. Next on Animal Wonder Down Under.
This is the first Australian marsupial to be sighted by the outside world. Now called the Tamar Wallaby, it was seen by the crew of a Dutch sailing vessel wrecked off the coast of Western Australia in 1629, over 150 years before Australia was colonized by Europeans. The sailors were astonished by the hopping animal which carried its young in a pouch. There are more than 200 species of marsupial in Australia, more than any other country in the world. They're called marsupials after the Latin word marsupium, meaning pouch. This pouch is just a fleshy cover for the milk nipples, and it varies from one species to another. Kangaroos and wallabies have a very definite pocket with an opening at the top, while other animals, such as the bandicoots, have their pouches opening from the rear. Some animals don't have a pouch as such at all, just an arrangement of nipples. The feature which sets marsupials apart from placental mammals is the way that they're born. In a semi-embryonic state, quite tiny, and usually without hind legs or tails. The mother gives no help at all. Using only its two front legs, the newly born embryo struggles upwards to the pouch. Once there, it fastens onto a nipple, which swells and locks the baby into position. It will stay on this nipple and keep growing until it's old enough to leave the pouch. The young kangaroo born in this remarkable way is about two centimeters long and weighs a fraction of a gram. If it's a male, it will grow to a height of two meters and weigh up to 65 kilos. This program is going to concentrate on some very small marsupials, some of them only a few centimeters long. Most of them are hardly ever seen, either because they're nocturnal or else very rare.